What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Fish O'Clock. I'm John Bojaraya, your host. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to use side imaging and down imaging to differentiate between fish species on your fish finder screen. So in the last video, I went through how I use traditional and down imaging to differentiate between fish species. At the end of the video, I determined that it was too difficult to be able to use traditional sonar to differentiate between fish species. It is more useful, however, to make an educated guess based off of where the fish was located in the water column, as well as what pieces of structure that the fish related to. In that same video, I also took side imaging pictures. Now, I found this test to be inconclusive. So in this video, I really want to show you guys how these fish look on side imaging and down imaging. So I locate a freshwater drum on my fish finder screen. The side imaging picture is interesting as this is a fairly large return, especially for this type of fish. You can also very clearly see uh, the back fins as well as the top of the fish is very curved. The down imaging scans are even more interesting though because there's two very distinct returns, the top of the fish and then the pelvic fin. And you can see this was quite a large drum here that I caught. Very interesting results. Uh, these fish appear very clear on side imaging and down imaging. So this is perhaps one of the most interesting sonar images I've ever taken. So this is of a blue catfish. The side imaging displays a number of fish on the screen, but the one I'm most interested in is there's a blue catfish that's right up against a, a fallen tree. So if you zoom in, you can see the shape of the catfish is elongated. The body section and the head section are uh, the most visible from a side scan standpoint. Um, the down imaging is also interesting. Uh, you mainly see the skull of the catfish as well as uh, the midsection, and then the tail kind of trails off towards the back. So I located a school of white bass along this rocky shoreline here. The white bass appear as grains of rice or possibly even sand on side imaging. Some of the white bass produced decent uh, shadows and others did not produce shadows at all. So this was interesting because other fish that I saw, most of them produced shadows. Some white bass did not at all, they just produced a little speck. The down images were also uh, much weaker from a return standpoint than other fish. So you see that light blue, that very, very light yellow return. Um, so it's very soft return as compared to other species. In addition, white bass have schooling behavior where they bunch up real close together. So if you see this on your fish finder, chances are you're looking at a white bass. <laughs> So now we get to discuss the highly sought after largemouth bass. Ironically, this is the most difficult species of fish to identify on side imaging and down imaging. The reason being is because largemouth bass are very structure oriented. So if you look at the side image that I have here, the largemouth bass is represented as almost like a single grain of rice. So it's a very strong, um, just very strong yellow color. And then the shadow, if you look at the shadow, you'll see that it's got some curvature to it. And the height isn't important as that just indicates how high the fish was sitting up off the bottom. 
Now the down imaging isn't super intuitive. Uh, actually, it looks similar to some of the other fish. So this is one of those cases where if you want to really hone in on a species of fish, you're going to have to uh, use all of your knowledge about that body of water in addition to what structure you're fishing at to make a more educated guess. Okay, so now we're gonna get a little bit into some technical details. This might help you better understand the differences between these technologies. So when we look at traditional sonar, we all know that it is a conical beam in the shape of an upside down ice cream cone. So when you think about a traditional sonar image, you have to remember that that image is a 2D representation of this 3D cone. Everything within the radius of that three-dimensional cone is what's being drawn on the screen. Now, down imaging is a bit different. Um, it still is a beam. It, it, down imaging produces a beam. However, the beam is more fan-shaped. What that means is it's not conical. It's much thinner and much narrower. So when down imaging takes a picture, that image represents a much smaller area than traditional sonar. Because of that, you get much higher definition. Now, side imaging works very similar to down imaging. The only difference is the how the beam is um, projected out. Instead of projecting straight down, it's projected to both sides. All right, so now I'm gonna share with you my secret sauce. This is how I'm able to identify fish using side scan and down scan. My first tip for you is to make sure that you're in an area with fish. Then what you're gonna do is turn on your fish finder and make sure that you are in the highest frequency. So if you have mega imaging, make sure that you're using mega imaging. That's the 1120 uh, megahertz. There's also the 840 kilohertz and a few other transducers have different settings. Make sure you are in mega imaging mode. My third tip, guys, make sure you turn off auto range. Very important, okay? When you change the range, what you're doing is you're changing the scale. So every time you go out and you fish, you're not gonna get accustomed to uh, what a fish looks like because you're changing the range all the time. Make sure that you change the range to manual. It's personal preference in terms of what you decide. Personally, I stick with about 60 to 80 feet. So generally I'm right at about 70 foot range. So that's 35 feet to either side of my boat. I find that to be the perfect amount. My next tip is for contrast settings. So for contrast, when you're, okay, when you're scanning over a soft bottom, you wanna make sure that you bump the contrast up. Now, the reason for this is because it's harder to see shadows when you are over that soft bottom. So when you bump that contrast up, it allows you to get a clearer picture of those shadows. On the opposite end, when you are over a hard bottom, you wanna lower that contrast. My next tip here is on brightness and sensitivity. So I think Garmin calls it brightness, Laurence calls it sensitivity. Uh, the only time you should really adjust your brightness, your sensitivity, is when there's a change in the water clarity or if it's more, if the lake becomes more turbid. So if you, I generally fish in central Texas where there's pretty clear water and I don't go out when the waves are really rough. So I generally keep my sensitivity at 100% pretty much all the time. Um, seldom I turn it down by a few, like I'll go down to like 97 or 95. So my final tip for you guys is to make sure that you take lots of screenshots. So I've got a little SD card in my fish finder. If you don't have one, make sure you buy one. It can hold 10,000 images or something. Just every time that you see something on your screen that you're like, ooh, I think that might be a fish, take a screenshot of it. Okay, this concludes the tips that I have for you guys. If you gained any value out of this video, please remember to hit like and subscribe to my videos. If you have any other tips to add, 
go ahead and write a comment below. I'm very active um, and I love to respond to my comments and I just wanna go ahead and thank you guys again for all the support. Uh, the last video I made got a lot of views, a lot of comments, and a lot of love from you guys. So again, I really appreciate everything. Thanks again for tuning in and I will see you guys on the next one.